When we think of chromaticism in music, I think it's easy to jump to music that's super dissonant or mind-bogglingly crazy or maybe even borderline atonal. After all, if a chromatic note just means one that doesn't fit inside the key of a piece of music, shouldn't that by definition mean that it will sound like it doesn't fit with the rest of the music? Well, yeah, kinda. Like, a lot of the time, yes. But a skilled composer can draw a lot of cool, unique effects out of the judicious use of chromatic notes if they're used in an appropriate way. Today I want to explore a couple of these unique effects using the soundtrack to one of my favorite games of all time, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Now, the mainline Mario games have been using chromatic notes in their melodies since the series' inception, and I briefly touched on this in my What Makes Mario Sound Fun video. Most of the time, these chromatic notes are used as subtle embellishments on stable chord tones, with a common move being for a note to dip down a half step below, even if this goes outside of the key, and then jump back up to its original position. This is called a chromatic neighbor tone, and it's found in music all throughout the Mario franchise. These embellishments are subtle, but they effectively lighten up the tone of the pieces that they're found in. Using these kinds of chromatic melodic moves always convey to me a sense of cheerfulness, or a feeling that the music is just trying to have fun and not take itself so seriously. The Paper Mario games take this idea to a whole other level. I mean, the mainline Mario games are always goofy, but even by Mario's standards, the Paper Mario games are over-the-top wacky, with heaps of colorful characters, all with their own weird motivations and personalities, and outlandish situations and problems that require even more outlandish solutions for Mario and his cabal of cartoon cohorts to get through. The music reflects this by cranking the zaniness up to 11, and today I want to take a deep dive into using chromaticism to achieve this effect both melodically and harmonically. Melodically, chromaticism is injected primarily through the use of approach tones. Similar to the examples we heard earlier, these chromatic approach tones from outside the key of a piece can subtly embellish the melody by resolving quickly to a more stable chord tone. In the Poshley Heights theme, we see some chromatic passing tones used to connect two important melodic notes for a subtle yet silly effect. In a lot of Nintendo music, the melodies will follow this formula where you'll take a short melodic idea and repeat it, but displace the last note or two by an octave to extend the short idea into a longer phrase. This is an easy way to extend a melody. Poshley Heights theme's melody could have followed this formula like so. That sounds totally fine, but the composer chose to further embellish this idea by approaching the final C note with a chromatic fall in a hasty triplet rhythm like this. This decision is a small one, but it brightens up the melody a little bit and the music sounds more fun for it. These chromatic approach tones can also be used in much less subtle ways to enhance the same effect. Accompanying this introductory cinematic is the tune Mail for the Mario Brothers, where the chromatic approach tones get much more attention than the notes that they're approaching. Sticking the chromatic notes right on the strong beats and resolving to the chord tones on the weak beats or off beats really amplifies the effect of this chromaticism, as does the sheer number of chromatic notes in this melody. I'm pretty sure half of the melody notes used are chromatic approach tones, and yet instead of making the melody feel unstable or confusing or gross, it just feels endearingly pokey. Going that far with it is definitely a little over the top, and putting that much emphasis on these chromatic notes can feel a little circusy if you use it too much, which is kind of what happens in the game's end of chapter fanfare. Honestly though, in a game with such an over-the-top aesthetic, with these big red curtains coming in to close off each chapter and everything, the circus music sound feels pretty appropriate. Don't go thinking that chromatic approach tones have to sound like circus music though. The exact same technique can also be used to make a piece of music sound a little more exotic. 
In Rogueport's theme, we see these minor chords outlined with a chromatic approach to both the 5th and the flattened 7th of each chord, which creates a mood that seems to fit with the CD location and the untrustworthy characters you meet there, without damaging the overall upbeat and lighthearted tone of the game as a whole. Placing the chromatic notes on the strong beats again helps emphasize the effect here. Such a small change goes such a long way, too. This is literally just an arpeggio of the underlying chord, and with the addition of these two chromatic approach notes, the music sounds so unique and interesting, and so not just like an arpeggio. The idea of the chromatic approach tone doesn't just relate to melodies. In the Shadow Sirens theme, where our cartoon villains are once again accompanied by cartoonishly villainous music, we see this example of a chromatic approach chord as our tonic A minor chord slips down to an A flat chord before resolving back up to A minor. Again, what would have just been a straightforward 1-5-1 progression in a minor key is made to sound fresh and unique through the addition of this one simple chromatic approach chord, and it doesn't even sound jarring or break up the flow of the piece. Where we see most of the chromaticism in Thousand Year Door's harmony is during short fanfares where you need to get a big dramatic point across very quickly. Check out the chapter introduction fanfare where this outlined C major triad in the melody is harmonized by a D minor 9 chord moving to a D flat 7 flat 5 chord. The C major chord outlined in this melody leads me to view this as an unresolved tritone sub, with the D flat 7 flat 5 refusing to resolve down to C major. This distinct lack of resolution is super dramatic and does a really nice job of setting up the action that's about to ensue. One of my favorite examples of this kind of quick, dramatic, harmonic gesture is in the Nighty Night Mario cue, which lulls you to sleep every time you go to rest in a bed. We open with our 1 and 4 chords in C major, C and F, with a melody that walks up the scale from C to F. We then jump up to the third of the chord, A, preparing for a resolution downward to G. What we don't expect to get at this point is a G sharp, harmonized by this A major 7 chord. This chromatic jump gives us the same dramatic harmonic twist that we want from a short cue like this, but the smooth voice leading ensures that it doesn't sound at all jarring as we gently wish Mario goodnight. So, as you can see, there are a lot of ways to use dramatic chromatic movements that aren't harsh or disorienting or even all that drastic. Keep your ears out for interesting harmonic and melodic moves like these in the games you play or the music that you listen to. If you find a cool one, please let me know on Twitter at 8BitMusicTheory because I love hearing about this stuff. If you wanted, you could even mosey on over to the official 8 Music Theory Discord server and let us all know over there. There are a lot of people there who also love to hear about cool music stuff, so I'm sure they would enjoy it too. And if you want to support the channel, feel free to check out my Patreon page here. Thanks to Jonathan Piles for the suggestion, and thank you all for watching. I got some pretty cool plans for the next couple videos, so you better look out for those because they're going to be a freaking doozy. Alright, see you later. <laughs>